Welcome to this MOOC's online video course, Theory of Yarn Structure. Today, we will start module 1, Fiber, the building block of yarns. In this module, we will define certain characteristics of fiber and we will establish the relationships among those characteristics. Specifically, we will talk about geometrical characteristics and mechanical characteristics of a single fiber. What you see here is a single fiber, is a scheme of a single fiber. This fiber has a length L also has a cross sectional area S. So, the volume of this fiber is cross sectional area multiplied by length. Let us assume that this fiber has a density we use symbol rho to denote the density of this fiber. From definition we know density is equal to mass per volume, where m is fiber mass, right. If we substitute volume in terms of S into L, then we obtain this expression. If we little rearrange this expression, then we obtain this expression. Now, we introduce one more terminology that is fiber fineness. fiber fineness is T which is equal to mass per unit length of the fiber. If we remember our earlier expression fiber density is equal to 1 by cross sectional area into mass per unit length. Now, if we substitute this mass per unit length by fineness then we obtain this expression. If we little rearrange, then we finally obtain this expression. So, what is this expression? Rho fiber density is equal to fiber fineness divided by fiber cross sectional area. This is a very interesting expression. That means, T fiber fineness is equal to fiber cross sectional area into fiber density. <coughs> now, <coughs> what is interesting here to see that fiber fineness, what we often use to characterize the fineness or coarseness of a fiber is not equal to the cross sectional area only. However, fiber fineness is equal to cross sectional area into density. That means, if we talk about fiber size or size of any geometrical object, we often use cross sectional area to denote 
the size of a material, whether a material is thick or a material is thin. So, we use cross sectional area to characterize the size of a fiber. Now, this cross sectional area is equal to fiber fineness by rho. It may so happen that a fiber being heavier may have higher numerical value of T. That means, this fiber fineness is not a very suitable expression to denote the size of a fiber. The fiber density is involved into that. We will come to this expression when we will solve some numerical problem. There we will be able to find out that fineness of two fibers may be different, but their cross sectional size may be practically same because their densities are different. So, geometrically two fibers having different values of fineness may have same size. So, the traditional expression of fiber fineness is not able to recognize this fact. Well, now typically if we look at the values of say fiber fineness, then what we see that there are micro fibers typically the fineness is less than 1 decitex. There are also cotton or compatible synthetic fibers their fineness range typically 1.6 decitex that can be wool or compatible fiber the fineness will be little high say 2.3 decitex. <coughs> and there could be coarse fiber which are sometimes called as carpet fiber, their fineness can be greater than 2.7 decitex. So, these are the very practical values of fiber fineness. We typically deal with such fibers <coughs> now if you have probably noticed that so far we talked about a typical fiber. We did not tell about the cross section of this fiber. We have never mentioned that the scheme of the fiber was considered to be cylindrical. So, it was a very general fiber. Now, this general fiber has a cross sectional area what we consider S. 
Now, in practice a fiber cross section may be circular, may not be circular. If it is circular like this, if this fiber cross section has an area small s, then we can simply write this cross sectional area is equal to pi d square by 4, where this is d. Here d stands for fiber diameter. So, practically how would you calculate fiber diameter? You will measure the cross sectional area then you will use this expression to determine diameter of a fiber. As I told you practically there can be many fibers which do not have circular cross section. Suppose a fiber may have non circular cross section or say a fiber may have this type of cross section. How do you find out diameter? For such object, we introduce a term called equivalent diameter. Let me define this term, what is equivalent diameter. Suppose this cross section has an area small s, then what we imagine let us have a circle which has the same cross sectional area S. Then diameter of this circle if it is D, then we can write S is equal to pi d square by 4 then d is called equivalent diameter that means if a fiber cross section is circular we use the term diameter and if a fiber has a non circular cross section then we use the term equivalent diameter and this is the way we practically determine equivalent diameter. Right. Now, we talk about fiber shape. How do you characterize the cross sectional shape of a fiber? Now, it is well known that the perimeter of a non cylindrical fiber is always greater than the perimeter of a cylindrical fiber. 
suppose we introduce a term fiber perimeter here small p. So, the perimeter of a real fiber divided by perimeter of a circular fiber which is equal to pi times d is greater than equal to 1. This equal to sign will come if it is cylindrical fiber, the greater than sign will come if it is non cylindrical fiber. Then we can further write p divided by pi times d minus 1 is greater than equal to 0. This expression let us use a symbol to denote this expression that is small q. So, this small q is p divided by pi times d minus 1, where this small q is called fiber shape factor. This means this q can be used to characterize the cross sectional shape of a fiber. How do you find out q? q is equal to perimeter of a real fiber divided by perimeter of a circular fiber having same cross sectional area minus 1. So, evidently the value of q will lie from 0 onwards when it is 0. Let us explain that. Let us consider a few shape and the value of q. If it is circular, ideal circular cross section, then the value of q is equal to 0. By the way, what is the dimension of q? q is equal to this. Now, if we use p in millimeter and d also in millimeter, then this ratio is dimensionless, then q becomes dimensionless. Often in SI system, a dimensionless quantity is either expressed by this or sometimes they are also expressed by this. Now, one thing I must tell you that so far we have learnt a few expressions. All the expressions can be expressed in terms of suitable units. For example, this particular expression we have expressed in terms of practical units. You must practice all these expressions in terms of units. We generally use this style to write a variable and its unit together. All the expressions we have derived so far can be written in terms of units. So, 
sometimes we write while solving numerical problems, sometimes we do not write in terms of units. If you practice writing all expressions in terms of units, it will help you while solving numerical problems. Right. So, we go back to our fiber shape. If a fiber is ideally circular, its shape factor is 0, but often in practice we hardly see a fiber cross section is circular. We see little deviation from circularity. For example, polyester fibers, man made fibers, synthetic fibers, they are they are not ideally circular, but we often say they are practically circular. So, if you cut the cross section of such real circular fiber, you will see their value of q will lie from 0 to say 0 0.6 typically. Similarly, if a fiber is triangular, ideally that means, if we consider an equilateral triangle, then you can calculate the shape factor will come approximately equal to 0 0.29. In practice, though we do not encounter with ideal triangular fiber, but there are triangular fibers, practically triangular fibers, for example, trilobal fiber. So, say practical so the, the fiber typically looks like this. The shape factor typically ranges from 0 0.12 to 0 0.2. What about cotton? What is the value of fiber shape factor for cotton fiber? fully mature cotton fiber, you remember the shape of a cotton fiber. The typically shape factor you can find out 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 in that range. Also, there are many other fibers which are now it is available, deep group fibers, 4 dg fibers, their shape factor is very large. As per this definition, shape factor will come for 4 dg fiber around 1.5. Now, we talk about fiber perimeter. So, what we derived q is equal to p by pi d minus 1. So, we can write perimeter is equal to pi times d into 1 plus q. If it is circular, then q is equal to 0, we obtain p is equal to pi d. If it is non-circular, q will have a value accordingly we can obtain the value of p. Okay. Now, there are lot of properties of textile materials which are dependent on 
the available surfaces of fibers. So, fiber surface is often required to be characterized. How we characterized fiber surface? Fiber surface is typically characterized by fiber surface area say we use a symbol capital A to denote fiber surface area. You look at this scheme of a fiber, how will you find out surface area of this fiber? Now, surface area typically means this area plus the topmost surface area plus the bottom most surface area, but the topmost surface area and the bottom most surface area are much much less than this surface area. Therefore, we often neglect the topmost surface area and the bottom most surface area while calculating the surface area of a fiber. Then we say that fiber surface area capital A is equal to perimeter times length. Now, what is perimeter? Pi d into 1 plus q into L, right. So, if we rearrange, we obtain capital A is pi d L 1 plus q. Length of a fiber is very easy to determine in any standard textile laboratory, it is possible to measure the length of a fiber. Diameter of a fiber is also possible to practically determine, fiber shape factor is also possible to determine practically any advanced structure laboratory, you will be where the cross section cutting microtome image processing techniques are available, you can easily find out diameter and also shape factor, then you can find out the value of A. Now, so this is the expression for fiber surface area. Often you will see a term called specific surface area. What is specific surface area? Specific surface area is equal to fiber surface area per unit mass. Let us use a symbol small a to denote fiber surface area per unit mass. So, what is small a? Small a is equal to capital A fiber surface area divided by mass. We used earlier symbol m to denote mass. So, small a fiber surface area per unit mass is equal to fiber surface area capital A divided by fiber mass. Now, what is capital A? Capital A is pi d L 1 plus q. We have just now derived it. What is mass? Mass is volume into density right and what is this volume? This volume is equal to 
cross section area into length. If it is cylindrical, then this equal to pi d square by 4 into length. So, if we substitute what we obtain is small a is equal to pi times d times l 1 plus q divided by v, v is s into l, s is pi d square by 4. So, pi d square by 4 into l, this is a, this is your v into rho, right. So, this is your v, v into rho. So, what we obtain is 4 into 1 plus q divided by d into rho. Let us look at this expression little deeply. Fiber surface area per unit mass depends on fiber shape, fiber diameter and fiber density. That means, because of the involvement of density fiber surface area per unit mass is not a purely geometrical variable. But when we talk about fiber surface area, we imagine geometry. However, fiber surface area per unit mass is not a geometrical variable because of the involvement of rho fiber density. That is why another terminology is often used to characterize fiber surface area that is fiber surface area per unit volume. How this becomes a purely geometrical variable? Let us explain. We use a symbol lambda to denote fiber surface area per unit volume. Now, lambda is equal to fiber surface area divided by volume. What is fiber surface area? This and what is volume? Cross sectional area into length. So, pi d square by 4 into L, what we obtain? 4 1 plus q divided by d. See here fiber shape factor and fiber diameter. That is how lambda becomes a purely geometrical variable. Now, <coughs> so lambda is equal to a times rho. What is lambda? Lambda is fiber surface area per unit volume. What is A? A is fiber surface area per unit mass and rho is fiber density. Right? Right. There is one more term regarding the geometry of fiber which we will all we will use in this course is called fiber aspect ratio. What is fiber aspect ratio? Fiber aspect ratio is equal to fiber length divided by fiber 
diameter. Typically for textile fiber the aspect ratio is quite large in the order of 10 to the power 3. All right. So, the basic geometrical characteristics of a fiber are explained. Now, we will go to talk about the me basic mechanical characteristics of a fiber. fiber mechanical characteristic. Now, how do we test the mechanical properties of a single fiber? We have the jaws of a tensile tester and we mount a single fiber right then we apply force suppose this force is f then what is the stress stress is for force divided by cross sectional area so that is called engineering stress let us use a symbol sigma star to denote engineering stress Okay. Show sigma star is F by S. The problem applying this expression in textile is it is very difficult to practically determine cross sectional area of a fiber because it is very, very small. So, that is why we do not use this expression to calculate stress. What we use is called some other expression for stress. So, let us come to that expression and we will show you how it comes. Now, how cross sectional area is related to fiber fineness T by rho right we have derived a few minutes earlier then we can write F by T into rho, rho is fiber density. In textile we often use this expression for stress F by T. So, let us call this stress as textile stress we use a symbol sigma which is equal to f by t and there is called engineering stress 
which is very popular term sigma star is equal to f by s. We have just now derived that sigma star is equal to f by t into rho. So, f by t is sigma into rho. So, it is not difficult to determine engineering stress for textile fiber. This quantity we often determine practically if we multiply by density of fiber we can find out engineering stress of a fiber right. To denote the stress also we used a few other quantities we will come to that. But this stress is a general stress when the stress at which a fiber breaks is called breaking stress which is related to a term called tenacity of a fiber right all right we often use a term called breaking length to characterize tensile stress of a fiber. What is breaking length? Breaking length is that length at which a fiber breaks under its own weight. Suppose, the breaking length of a fiber is capital R, right. Then, what is its mass R into T becomes its mass, because T is mass per unit length, length is R. So, the mass is R into T if we multiply this mass by g acceleration due to gravity then we obtained force f then we can write f by t is equal to r into g what is f by t f by t is sigma. So, we can write sigma is equal to r into g. So, finally, we can write r is equal to sigma divided by g. So, if we know sigma, we can find out breaking length and vice versa. If we know r, we can find out sigma. So, what we see is that all these terminologies textile stress, engineering stress, breaking length what we often use to characterize mechanical behavior of a fiber are interlinked right. Okay. So, these are the basic physical characteristics of a single fiber which you will see often we will use in many modules in this course. Well, in the last class we established relationships on geometrical and mechanical characteristics of a single fiber. Today, we are going to solve a few numerical problems on those characteristics in order to understand them in a better manner. But before going that, let us recapitulate what we learnt in the last class. You 
if you remember in the last class we started with this scheme of a single fiber l denotes the length of the fiber s denotes the cross sectional area of the fiber p denotes the perimeter of the fiber m denotes the mass of the fiber v denotes the volume of the fiber and capital a denotes the surface area of the fiber now the first important relationship what we established in the last class was t is equal to s into rho t denotes fiber fineness s denotes fiber cross sectional area rho denotes fiber density then the second important relation that we established in the last class was related to fiber diameter fiber diameter d was equal to square root of 4 times fiber fineness divided by pi times rho d denotes fiber diameter t denotes fiber fineness rho denotes fiber density afterwards we established a relationship on fiber safe factor q was equal to p fiber perimeter divided by perimeter of a circle minus 1 so q denotes fiber safe factor p denotes fiber perimeter pi times d denotes the perimeter of an equivalent circle and if you remember well q varies <coughs> from 0 and onwards 0 means circular fiber and non circular fiber then q will be greater than 0. Then from this relation we can find out the expression for fiber perimeter which is equal to this fiber perimeter is equal to pi times fiber diameter into 1 plus fiber safe factor. Then we established an expression of fiber surface area capital A which was equal to perimeter into L. You remember while deriving this relationship we ignored the topmost area and the bottommost area of the fiber because these two areas were negligibly smaller as compared to the area available on the surface. Then we established another relationship related to fiber surface area per unit mass So, here small a denotes fiber surface area per unit mass, q denotes fiber safe factor, rho denotes fiber density, d denotes fiber diameter. Afterwards, we derived another relationship on fiber surface area per unit volume, which was equal to. d that means gamma fiber surface area per unit volume q is fiber safe factor and d denotes fiber diameter. <coughs> so, the relationship between gamma and small a is this. So, here gamma denotes fiber surface area per unit volume small a denotes fiber surface area per unit mass and rho denotes fiber density. Then we talked about aspect ratio of a fiber which is equal to fiber length divided by fiber diameter. Then we established a few mechanical characteristics of a single fiber. The first one was 
sigma star is equal to sigma into rho. What is sigma star? Sigma star is the engineering stress of a fiber. What is sigma? Sigma is textile stress that is force divided by fineness of a fiber and rho is fiber density. One more relationship we have established sigma is equal to r times g where sigma is breaking stress force per unit fineness and r is the breaking length of the fiber g is acceleration due to gravity. So, these all relationships we have established in the last class. Today we are going to use this relationship in order to solve a few numerical problems. Now, let us start with the first numerical problem. The very first numerical problem is this. You will see there are two columns written column A and column B. Under column A certain characteristics of fibers are written, under column B correspond certain characteristics of fibers are written. You have to express each fiber characteristics into the terms of the corresponding fiber characteristics along with units. So, this exercise is given to help you to write the correct expressions in terms of units. No doubt it is a very simple exercise, however very simple things we do mistake sometimes. So, what is the first fineness? You have to express fineness in terms of mass and length along with suitable dimensions. So, what is fineness? Fineness we have used the symbol T is equal to T is often used in terms of x text is equal to mass. Let us express mass in terms of gram divided by length. Let us express length in terms of meter. So, in order to balance both sides you have to multiply by 1000. If you think length in terms of meter is not a suitable dimension, no problem. Then you express length in terms of millimeter. So, T takes mass in terms of gram divided by length in terms of millimeter, then you write this So, by using this expression you will be able to calculate T all right. What was the second expression second expression fineness in terms of density and cross sectional area of a fiber so you have to express fineness fiber fineness in terms of fiber density and fiber cross sectional area how will you do you have just now learnt fiber fineness 
often used index is equal to fiber cross sectional area say meter square into density kg per meter cube in order to balance we have to write 10 to the power 6. Okay. If you would like to express in terms of millimeter square which is a more practical unit to express fiber cross sectional area you accordingly change this numerical value. All right, simple. Okay, we go to the third one. What is the third one? Fiber diameter in terms of fiber density and fiber fineness. So, we have to express fiber diameter in terms of fiber density and fiber fineness along with suitable units. So, what is diameter? diameter is often expressed in millimeter and we have just now learned 4 times t, t let us express in text divided by pi times rho, rho let us express in kg per meter cube you need not to multiply by any factor here. So, this is a balanced expression fiber diameter in millimeter is equal to root over 4 into t, t in text divided by pi into rho, rho in kg per meter cube. Okay. What was the fourth one? Fourth one fiber safe factor in terms of fiber perimeter and fiber diameter. This exercise we have already done once, let us repeat it. Fiber safe factor Q dimensionless is equal to perimeter in terms of millimeter minus 1 fiber safe factor which is non dimensional is equal to fiber perimeter in millimeter divided by pi times d, d is fiber diameter in millimeter minus 1. Okay. Then we come to the next one, what was the next one? Next one was specific surface area in terms of density, diameter and safe factor. So, we have already derived the expression specific surface area A suitable unit is meter square per kilogram is equal to 4 times 1 plus q, q is dimensionless divided by uh, was d in millimeter and rho kilogram per meter cube. In order to balance you have to multiply by 1000. So, fiber specific surface area in terms of meter square per kg is equal to 4 into 1 plus q, q is fiber safe factor dimensionless divided by fiber diameter in millimeter and fiber density in kilogram per meter cube. In order to balance you have to multiply by 1000. Okay. Then we come to the next one, fiber surface area per unit volume diameter and safe factor. So, we have already learnt
meter inverse is equal to 4 into 1 plus q divided by d d if you write in terms of millimeter then you have to multiply by 1000 right so gamma is a symbol for surface area per unit volume q is fiber safe factor and d is fiber diameter if we use millimeter which is a practical unit to express fiber diameter then we have to multiply by 1000 to have a balanced expression okay the last one is surface area per unit volume but in terms of density and specific surface area so what is fiber surface area per unit volume no problem a meter square per kg rho kg per meter cube it is already balanced right so this exercise was a simple exercise but you are supposed to express all expressions in this course along with units so start doing that what will help you it will help you to solve numerical problems correctly and quickly now we will go to the second numerical problem second numerical problem reads as follows calculate the di equivalent diameter of a non circular polyester fiber of 3 denier fineness and that of the polypropylene fiber of 2 denier fineness comment on the results obtained. So, you have to basically calculate diameter equivalent diameter of a polyester fiber and equivalent diameter of a polypropylene fiber. So, let us do that diameter of polyester we will use millimeter as its unit what is the expression root over 4 t of polyester in unit tex divided by pi times density of polyester in kg per meter cube. Now, what are given? 4 into fineness of polyester is given 3 denier. So, in text it is 3 by 9 pi into density, density of polyester fiber, it is well known value. 1380 kg per meter cube. So, if you find out this value, you will probably see 175 0 0.0175 millimeter. Similarly, we can calculate the diameter of polypropylene fiber. Four times fineness of polypropylene in tex divided by pi into density of polypropylene in kg per 
meter cube. Okay, let us see what are given. Four into fineness of polypropylene two denier. Two denier means this much of takes pi into density of polypropylene. Typically, density of polypropylene is considered to be 910 kg per meter cube. So, if you calculate you will find out this value will come around this. Now, what we see is that the fineness of polyester fiber was given 3 denier. Fineness of polypropylene fiber was given as 2 denier and we calculated diameter of polyester fiber as 0 0.0175 mm that is probably is equal to micrometer and diameter of polypropylene 0 0.0176 mm which is equal to 17.6 micrometer. What we see is that there is a significant difference in terms of fiber fineness. So, based on these two values we will say that polyester fiber is coarser than polypropylene fiber, but what we see is that their diameters are practically same. That means, that means although there was a significant difference in fineness, but their diameters are practically same. So, fiber fineness does not truly express fiber size, this is our comment on the results. All right. Now, we will proceed to problem number 3, numerical problem 3, it reads as follows. A cert of 100 gram weight is made up of non cylindrical cotton fibers of 25.4 millimeter length, 3 decitex fineness, and 0 0.05 safe factor. Calculate the total surface area occupied by the fibers in the cert. Okay. So, what is given here L twenty five point four T zero point three tex Q zero point zero five and mass of the whole sort is given hundred gram. Okay. you have to calculate total surface area occupied by fibers in this art. Now, how will you find out the mass of one fiber mass?
mass of a single fiber we need to find out. How we find out? T into x L in millimeter divided by thousand. So, if we, if we substitute these values, what you will see 0 0.3 into 25.4 into 10 to the power minus 6. Okay. Now, how many fibers are present in that cert? Suppose, capital N we use to denote number of fibers present in this cert. So, mass of this cert say we use capital M divided by mass of a single fiber. So, 100 divided by this expression six okay now total surface area <coughs> let us express in terms of meter square is equal to surface area of one fiber multiplied by number of fibers. So, how do we find out surface area of one fiber? Right into number of fibers into to in order to balance you will have this factor okay so 3.14 into diameter diameter is 4 t by pi rho what is t t is 0 0.3 pi into rho density of cotton fiber density of cotton fiber we can take as 1520 kg per meter cube into 1 plus q. What is q? q is given 0 0.05 into L. What is the length of the fiber? 25.4 into number. We have obtained this 0 0.3 into 25.4 into 10 to the power minus 6 into this 10 to the power minus 6. So, if you calculate you will obtain this value as 17.4262 meter square. So, the total surface area occupied by the fibers in this art is 17.4262 meter square. All right. Okay. We let us proceed to the problem number four. So now let us come to the fourth problem. The fourth problem reads as follows: The tenacity of a polyester fiber is 0 0.43 newton per tex. Calculate the mechanical engineering strength expressed in mega Pascal of this fiber. Comment on whether this fiber is stronger than the ordinary steel which has engineering strength of 500 mega Pascal. Okay. So, if you recall we used symbol sigma to denote tenacity, tensile strength. 
say Newton vertex is equal to breaking force F takes okay and we use sigma star to denote engineering strength Newton per meter square breaking force n f and cross sectional area meter square. So, what use, using these two expression now what is s? s is related to fiber fineness and fiber density. So, if we use this expression then finally, you will be able to write sigma star engineering strength in mega Pascal is equal to sigma Newton per tex into density of fiber kilogram per meter cube. Now, what are given? This value sigma 0 0.43 Newton per tex given density of polyester fiber. Density of polyester fiber we can assume as 1380 kg per meter cube. If we multiply these two, we obtain 593.4. So, engineering strength of this polyester fiber is equal to 593.4 mega Pascal. It is well known that still has an engineering strength of 500 mega Pascal. So, this polyester fiber is more tenacious than ordinary steel. All right. Now, we come to our last problem of this module. This problem reads as follows. The tensile strength of a cotton fiber is 0 0.32 Newton per tex. Find out the breaking length of this fiber. We will first write the relationship between tensile strength and breaking length of a fiber. Sigma is the tensile strength of a fiber. If we express it in centinewton per tex, then we write this expression where r is breaking length in kilometer. So, this expression is balanced in both sides. So, we need to find out r breaking length in kilometer sigma centinewton per tex divided by 0 0.981. What is sigma? Sigma 0 0.32 Newton per tex. So, in centinewton per tex 32. which is equal to little higher than 32.6198. So, the breaking length of this fiber is 32.6198 kilometer all right. So, we have solved 5 numerical problems in this module. Thank you very much for your attention.